Everybody, it's Thursday, March 24th. We are doing a Instagram and Facebook Live today, and we have some really uh, important news to cover regarding immigration updates. Uh, first, uh, we have the really main topic today, what we're going to talk about, which is the EB-5 million dollar visa, the changes that have happened to that, how to get a green card, and what options you have. We also, earlier in the day, had Channel News 13 here at our office doing an interview about the upcoming changes for Ukraine. The Biden administration announced some really important changes um, that we are going to share with you. And if you watch here locally, Spectrum, go ahead and check it out. And uh, you'll see it today at 5 o'clock on Spectrum News 13. Basically, the Biden administration's pledge to admitting 100,000 plus Ukrainians to the United States. So this is not something that is going to count towards the refugee system. They're going to be trying other ways to get individuals here, either on expediting family member petitions or doing humanitarian parole in place for political activists, members of the journalism community, or even other some minority communities. Uh, so check that out. It should be on Spectrum later. Uh, and today's topic, as I mentioned, is the EB-5 million dollar visa. There's a lot of myths about this visa. Can I buy a million dollar house? Can I invest in a piece of land? And is that going to be enough to get a green card? Uh, so we're going to talk about some of these myths today. And but before we get started, some good news, like we always do. Yesterday, we had uh, if you follow me on my personal Instagram, you'll see that there was a two and a half plus hour marriage interview that I attended for USCIS. And it is one of the probably most difficult set of circumstances I've had for a marriage case. Uh, not only was the, the clients do a great job and were prepared, so we did an awesome job at our office preparing them, if I might say so myself, uh, but then the case was approved uh, the same day and the green card was issued. So that's awesome. We are very happy for our client and happy for us because this was something that I was really kind of hesitant to take on and we did it and we kind of pushed forward on that. All right. Uh, also, this weekend is Arab Festival at downtown Orlando, Lake Eola. Uh, this has been absent for two plus years. So we are looking forward to coming back. We've been sponsoring Arab Festival for over six years now. And if you have any other type of festival, music festival, Brazilian festival, or you want us to get involved, please feel free to let us know. And uh, we'll definitely be there. So if you're around this weekend, stop by Lake Eola uh, for Arab Festival is amazing food, music. We'll be there. We'll be giving out prizes. And if you want to get to know us or ask us questions, look for us in our sweaters. It's actually going to be a beautiful day on Sunday. It'll be like 72, 73 degrees. All right. EB-5 million dollar visa. What does this all mean? And why is there news about this particular process? So last year, uh, the Regional Center Program, which is a sect under the EB-5, was uh, lapsed. So this program went away and people who had applications pending were stuck in limbo, were not able to proceed. So what am I talking about? What's Regional Center? What's EB-5? So in 1990, the EB-5 was created to help encourage investors to invest in our country as long as they invested a million dollars and created 10 full-time jobs. It was a job creation visa. Then there was the regional center program, which was added. And this allows for people to invest in government approved projects for half a million dollars or target employment areas for half a million dollars. So this regional center program is constantly expiring and Congress would typically renew the program. Well, last year they chose not to renew it and the program just completely went away, which means that we had clients who had invested half a million dollars in our country who were just waiting in limbo completely. And we didn't know if they were going to be getting their green cards or not. We had one individual whose case was already approved and she was waiting for her appointment at the embassy and they stopped the case. So uh, this was really kind of devastating for people who have committed so much money, energy and resources and good faith in our country. Well, uh, March, I believe 14th, Congress had reauthorized the program and now it is back. But there are some changes. So the regional center program is back. 
and let's talk about the changes. So for those who had previously invested the half million dollars and had applications pending or had 526s, that's the form already approved, but we're waiting for an interview. These people are grandfathered back into the program and their you know, time money is not going to be lost. So that's awesome. We've had numerous clients in this situation who had invested half a million and now we're kind of SOL because the program ended. So the people who did file petitions before the program expired, they are being grandfathered in. So that's great news. What about new investors? What's happening? Well, the new investors, the authorization has been extended to 2027, which is great that it's going to be for at least five years. So we can have some peace of mind that the same problem is not going to happen again to our clients. But they've also raised the amounts. Now, the million dollar amount has gone from only a million to a million fifty thousand, uh, which isn't a big amount. But the EB five uh, T areas or regional center amounts, which are typically five hundred thousand dollars, went up to eight hundred thousand dollars. That is a pretty significant change. However, if you think about this program being around since the nineteen nineties and inflation, and it's never been increased, it's really not that unreasonable. Um, so. That's really great. Uh, basically, as I mentioned, Regional Center Program is a government approved project to receive money from foreigners as a loan in order to obtain their green card status. And then the project is developed. Like, for example, we've done some hotels or bridges or even solar power plants where our clients put their money in there. And we've seen them all the way through their 10 year green card are now getting their citizenship. So we have the new amounts, the grandfathering in and the um, at least five years to move forward. Now, it is going to be automatically adjusted for inflation every fifth year. So every five years when they go to determine whether or not they're going to keep uh, the EB-5 program or not, if they decide to do so, it has to be adjusted to account for inflation. So before we saw these numbers stay the same for over 30 years, it's not going to be the case now. And with the way inflation may or may not be heading currently, uh, I would suggest for people to get in. Now, as you know, immigration is under the executive branch, Department of Homeland Security, and typically these policies tend to change with administrations from president to president. A president, uh, previous president before Biden uh, stated that he increased the amounts to 800, uh, actually 900,000 and 1.8 million, but then that was deemed unlawful. So, it, you know, for anybody who thinks that 800,000 is a good opportunity for them, now is the time while this administration is currently accepting these applications. Now, yes, it was announced on March 14th and it was reauthorized, but the uh, it was going to not it's going to take 60 days before they're going to start accepting applications and implementing the program. Now, this is a big change, so the government and the agencies kind of have to create the policies in place and how to apply. So 60 days is not that bad. It's all great news for our clients who are looking to move forward with this. Um, so that's what we have for EB-5. We, hadn't, we have some frequently asked questions on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through those. So we talked about what is the EB-5 process. Now we're gonna go ahead and talk about, can I get my green card? Essentially investing through the EB-5 program and through regional centers, that's exactly what you're doing. It's the most direct path to permanent residency to getting your green card is through investment. Now, what you need to know is typically when you invest through the EB-5 program and your case is approved, you're going to receive what's called conditional residency, meaning that your green card is valid for two years because of the fact they want to make sure that just as soon as you get your green card, you're not firing people, people's jobs are not lost and you're taking your money out. They want to see it in for a period for at least two years. So at the end of the two years, we have to do what's called removal of conditions. Now, this is similar to people who get married and get their green card. There are a lot of times you have to remove conditions. So it's the same terminology. But in this case, we still have to demonstrate that the money is still present and the jobs are still created. And for regional centers, we typically just work with really, um, really credible organizations who have 20, 30 years of experience and who have always provided us with the proper documentation. So please be careful on that. No, I am gonna say there are so many get rich quick schemes out there. There's so many bad regional centers out there. If they cannot prove to you 
previous approvals or some type of rate of return, you do not want to mess with them. Now, I do have a lot of savvy investors who are like, Mr. Mubarak, Naif, why would I give them $800,000 and my rate of return is less than 1%? I can make more money investing somewhere else. Well, guess what? You're talking to me as an immigration lawyer not to make money. You're talking to me to get a green card. So the way these companies look at it is that your return on investment is your permanent resident status. That is your green card. So if you're being offered by a project 15% returns, 20% returns, expedited processing, I just typically tell people if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So please be careful with that. Make sure you work with an incredible uh, attorney or organization to help find a good regional center with a good history. So that being said, at the end of the two years of your green card, you will get a full permanent resident status once it's demonstrated that your money's there and the jobs have been created. All right, how long does processing take? This is a good question. Uh, we tend to see this, um, let me fix this really quick. We tend to see this question very often. Uh, so this basically is how long does this process take? Because many people will ask us, so I have to send over $800,000 to the United States. How long do I have to wait? Many people even think, hey, I've invested $800,000. Can I come tomorrow? Unfortunately, not. that's not the case. So the US government wants you to invest the money and then wait outside for the processing times until your case has been adjudicated, until the source of funds have been reviewed. So this is a process that could take a year and a half to two years. This was prior to the program lapsing. So I would imagine that it's going to be around the same time, if not longer. So people need to understand that this is a lengthy process. But again, it's worthwhile because at the end of the day, it's going to get you and your family the permanent resident status. Now, on that note, I just want to say that a, sim a single investor who, let's say, is married and has four kids, that $800,000 is going to cover the whole family. Now, if you're a single investor that's not married and no children, you're still the same person who's still going to be putting $800,000. I do have a family from a particular region. They have like over 10 kids and they got in at 500,000. So you would imagine that that's not so bad when you think about it per person, but it does qualify per family and it is a really good option. Um, who is eligible to apply? So we've spoken to you all before about investor visas like the E2 or treaty investors when those individuals typically have to be a citizen from a particular country that signed a treaty with the United States. This is not the case for the EB-5. Anybody who has the money can qualify. So whether you're a national from China or from India or whatever it may be, you can be eligible for the EB-5 program. Now I say that just having the money alone is not gonna be enough. You have to prove the source of funds and the legality of the money. So the US government does not want individuals who just deposited $2 million in their bank account and we don't know where is this money from. Is this drug money? Is this human trafficking money? Is this illegal arm trading money? We need to see a proper source of funds. So sometimes this can be difficult if somebody hasn't really kept the best bank records or for they're from a country that doesn't have strict financial rules. So please make sure that just having the money alone is not enough. Oftentimes in our consultations, we kind of review with our clients or not kind of, we do for a long time review with our clients, where is this money coming from? What documents do we have to prove it? And how can we demonstrate that these are legal monies that have been obtained through lawful means? So I like to give the example of people who will sell a piece of land that may have been in their family for 20 years. That's a real easy way to demonstrate the source of funds. You have the property that was inherited 20 years ago. You have the documents for that. You put it up for sale, you have the for sale contract, and then you have the transfer of the, of, the, of the money to complete that transaction. That is like a really clean proof and source of funds that we can look into. Now, what's also pretty cool about the EB-5 is that the money doesn't have to be yours. So what do you mean? Well, if you have a friend who is willing to gift you $900,000 or a parent or an uncle who wants you to go to the US to pursue your dream, they can gift you the money required for the EB-5. However, they must be required to prove where their money came from. So even though that gift is not yours and you're just showing them your bank account and a letter, 
that this was gifted by my uncle, for example, they we're going to need proof from the uncle as to where he got the money. So when the question is who can invest or who qualifies, it's anybody with the funds or the proper source of funds to demonstrate that they can go ahead and qualify and invest for this visa. So this question is the investment 500,000 or has it changed? We talked about this for length of time. Uh, this number has gone from 500,000 to $800,000 to invest in the US uh, regional center program to get a green card. Uh, this question always cracks me up. What is the rate of return for $900,000? Again, this fluctuates from regional center to regional center. You have to think of these regional centers as what they are, which are independent companies. They're not U.S. government projects. They're independent companies with projects that have been approved by the U.S. government to receive investment funds from abroad that would qualify people for the green card. So each regional center is going to set up their own rules as to what is their rate of return for their loan. So maybe that's not clear because I forgot to explain it earlier. When you put the money in the regional center program, it's typically a loan based model, meaning you are loaning this large project $800,000 and they are going to use that money over the course of five to seven years. So in addition to the length of time that may fluctuate from program to program, the rate of return is also going to change. Now, most of the time we have a uh, regional centers that you have a less than 1% return. And that's where my clients are like, that's not even going to beat inflation. I don't want this. Well, at the end of the day, you're talking to an immigration lawyer because you want to immigrate to the United States. You're not here to invest. Many people could make, and you probably will make more money putting it somewhere else. But at the end of the day, people want a permanent secure guarantee to come to the United States. And that's what this program can offer. This question we received is, do I need to speak English? No, you do not. There's no requirements for that. Uh, typically, unless you're doing a direct EB-5, direct is not a regional center. That means you're going to create your own company with a million fifty, and you are going to create 10 full-time jobs. At that point, if you are saying that you're going to be the director of this business enterprise, perhaps the consulate might ask you questions as to, you don't even speak English. How are you going to run this business? But as far as EB-5 regional centers, I haven't seen that come into play. So you don't have to necessarily worry about that experience yeah so we have uh, a lot of experience with eb5 applications we've done numerous regional centers we've done direct as well many people were on hold because of the lapse in the program but that's now uh past and hopefully they can continue and we've had basically you know i can't say 100 percent guarantee but that's kind of been our results with our clients but everybody's case is do different we do such a tough job vetting their financial documents to make sure that we're going to have a successful case because nobody likes to lose not us or not our client uh, we take that responsibility very seriously so uh, i often tell people perhaps we start with a smaller retainer fee and we investigate your chances and your eligibility so you're not committing uh, so much money and so much out of your life and time for this particular visa now i often tell people you know i'm not a financial planner i'm probably the worst person to ask about money. But I also tell people, if you are to lose this $800,000 tomorrow, would you, would it ruin your life, right? Would you lose sleep at night? You know, perhaps this might not be the visa for you. So that's the big takeaways from this EB-5 regional center reauthorization, which is huge news. Um, check it out. We have the information on our website. If you think anybody would like this information, I know many of our clients were waiting for it. So here it is. Congrats. Uh, this is awesome. I think we have a question. Um, maybe. Let me see here. <laughs> so if someone is here already, can they open a business or needs to be an investment institution? It's a very good question. Thank you. Uh, so that question is asking, do, do I need to be here or can it, does it have to be an institution? So you can do direct, but you have to do over a million dollars. You have to have 10 full-time jobs. This can make it more very difficult. And what I've seen, unfortunately, in the past is somebody who invests a million dollars into a business that they're not familiar with, they lose the business, they lose the money, and they lost their chances at the visa. If I had it my way and I had that kind of money and I was trying to immigrate to the US, I would definitely do regional center. That's just my opinion. But thank you for that question. And for, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be on the news in about 30 minutes. So check out the Spectrum News 13 interview. Give us your thoughts. Follow us on social media. Please like and share. And I appreciate you guys 
uh, joining me this afternoon and I'll see you all next time.